Hey, no, I was talking about attention. Hey, Matt, would you like to leave us in the pledge? Yeah, 530, guys, let's stay in the pledge. Yes, ma'am. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. Roll call. Charles Wolsey. Here. Jenny David. Here. Roger Mayhew. Yes. Brenda Simmons. Here. And Craig Scott. Here. Any additions or corrections to the agenda, commissioners? I have not Any guys? Oh. Yes. 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 I'd like to add on uh, transit. Uh, we are going to the wash bot. The wash bot that we approved at our last agenda. So where would you like that? Cold storage. Uh, could we put that at uh, discussion items? That would work. Okay, transit. And what else? I'm sorry. It, it was just transit slash the the wash by and the new uh, cold storage mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Anything else? Uh, public comment. Any public comment on agenda items only? Any public comment on the phone? Okay. Appointments, I don't believe we have any, correct him? Unless something's changed. Discussion items. A, notice of intent to exercise right of first refusal. So you've got a handout that was uh, provided by the treasurer that uh, lists a number of properties that uh, you have as a municipality, a first right of refusal. Uh, the way this process works and that uh, steal the treasurer's thunder is that uh, the municipalities have the first right of refusal on these properties. After the municipalities have passed some, then the, the land bank actually has an opportunity to pick them up as well. After that, I'm not sure what happens. I think this kind of falls off, you know, for me. But uh, you have uh, you know, a certain period of time as a county. If there are any of these pieces that you'd like to pick up, you could. I will um, just be so bold as to recommend that you not do any at this point. We, I think, got plenty of land already. Is this less? There's only a page, and then one on the next page. Is is this less than last year? It's seven more than last year. What oh, is? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Any any questions or concerns? I mean, obviously, we don't have free money to spend on this. So, anything, commissioners? I I did. I saw the list, but I, I, I it's just property numbers. I right. don't know where we're at. So I didn't know where we are. When was the deadline for this? July first. Oh, okay. But the sooner the better. I'll come into your office, take a look at what properties are there. Okay. I will too. Oh. Okay. Uh, or you can look at the county website, the GIS mapping system, and put it oh, in the parcel. Well, if you don't want me to come in, I'll You're look at this. Stop by. You're welcome to stop by. It's I'll look at good, the It's good information to know that it is offered on the public uh, yeah. website. Yeah. For anyone who would like to see, you can go to the GIS on the county website, put in the parcel number, and look at the map. Okay. Item B procurement card limits. This um, last week, we had a situation that's becoming pretty common uh, over at Veterans. They needed to uh, register for a conference that the Veterans Affairs team attends each year. Uh, and a conference, of course, is multiple days, which means hotel stays. The procurement card limits that we set when we passed the policy a year or two ago was at $1,000 unless the department came in and requested more. We've had uh, several departments come in since then who requested a higher limit because the thousand just wasn't quite enough to get them uh, through things like registering for conferences. And what happened with veterans this time, uh, they had some uh, charges already on their card. There weren't many, but uh, as you can imagine, that's sort of shrinking that thousand. They had two employees who need to go to this conference. And uh, they were scrambling uh, to put together enough departments with procurement cards that had space on them to register for this conference. In their case, um, we were able to work it, work it out that the hotel actually held with a deposit. They didn't require 100% up front, but it still left them a little bit short. And just would like to have discussion about uh, your thoughts about raising the minimum on these uh, procurement cards, uh, raised up from 1,000 to maybe 2,000 or 2,500. Uh, we had, uh, Karen, I think it was six yeah. we had identified that have already come through and have had to have increases uh, on their cards. And I don't recall exactly how many total that we have out there, but not much more than those six. 
Uh, so that's why this is here, just to gauge your thoughts on uh, the, the possibility of raising those limits uh, a little bit so that we don't have these recurring problems. There's six, there's six procurement cards total? Is that what you just No, we have six that have asked for increases from that initial $1,000 that you have granted an increased value. How many total are there? I didn't bring the list with me. Um, we just printed it today. just printed it for me. I too. want to say maybe 10 or 11 departments that have credit cards. Has there been any issues with them? Other than that, the timing of paying the limit is correct. Any other issues? No, no. Commissioner, we'll see. Quite well. So ultimately, though, the cards used, you see everyone, and mm -hmm. you're the one that approves it, or so. All of the credit card statements come to me. I then disperse them to the departments that have charges, asking them to review the statement and code their invoices, return them to me, and then I process the payment and turn in a. a document to claims for you all to review for the claims documents and post a journal entry for the expenses to post to the books. But ultimately you look at it, if something doesn't seem right, you're the one that- It's calling the department. Mm -hmm. It's in claims for us to review too. Correct, after I process the payment, I give it to Tracy to put in claims for you to review. Right. But then the department should also be listing it as a prepaid item for you to review in the regular claims process. Comments, thoughts, commissioners? Commissioner Woodsy? I mean, it seems like it's a real inconvenience at, at moments here, and I like the process. I, I definitely like that it goes through Karen first, and of course it even gets down to us when we, the two commissioners we have at that time that are going through them, so I, I have no problem increasing it. Commissioner Scott? This seems to be a exception to the rule. Instead of the rule being an exception, I wouldn't mind having the treasurer or and or the administrator be able to have a, a little higher limit to allow it to happen. I'm afraid that by raising the limit, will spending go up? Yeah. And uh, because the limit is higher, they're already going to different departments to get other credit. We're, we're going to other departments trying to, to loop well, credit cards together. In in this case, that's exactly what was happening. And I appreciate that um, uh, this might have been avoided had the registration occurred maybe two or three weeks earlier instead of the last day. But that's where we were. That's kind of where I was going to go with that. I mean, you register for things typically. I mean, you have a pretty, pretty substantial notice. Um, and they could have easily came to us. I understand they can be convenience, but they could have easily come for this approval. Uh, well before the actual deadline, but uh, your thoughts? If we got 11 of them out there and we raise them and they max them, that's a pretty good chunk of change. Maybe just raise Tim's and that way Tim could approve the purchase. We raised his for one deal. Right. For not for, and temporarily. Right. Not forever. But mm -hmm. if you raise them all and they max them, somewhere mm -hmm. along the line, we got to pay for it. Good point. That's a good point. Um, hey, in a situation like this, maybe we could raise it for that one, for that one, one incident to cover that cost, and just approve it for one incident, not car blanc across the board. I don't like the car blanc across the board because it could get out of control. Karen, did you have something? Yeah. May I suggest that you not just keep temporarily changing credit limits for departments because every time you do I have to go in and request the increase wait for the approval to come notify that department and then when the expenditure's done I have to go back in and decrease it through the system all right I would rather you not do those on temporary basis all right. you're going to set a limit set a limit for that department and and call well, that it doesn't make sense because some things are going to be high very few I mean that's the whole purpose of them coming to us right but for the individual under Tim's authority Versus us raising all these other departments randomly and everybody having a different credit limit. Initially, we set it so that everyone would be the same and there was consistency across the board. Correct. Now we've got all different love all different levels of credit lines for different departments. We we don't though. I mean, they're backed all to. Am I guess am I miss? 
hang on, please. Am I misunderstanding? Right now, everybody is at, and if there's somebody that's going to be over the thousand, they have to come to us for the approval. But everybody's at a thousand right now, correct? So what's happened? Uh, or since we've adopted the policy, six departments have come in and asked for higher. Limits. Correct. They did. So those six are higher than the thousand. The rest of them are still at the thousand. So what are the six at? I was under the understanding I thought we did like a single purchase for those six. Uh, no, you did that with the latest one when uh, emergency uh, management was in here and they needed that one time purchase. So we did increase Correct. Card one time. The other ones, for instance, friend of the court was in here, uh, had an increase. Uh, we increased them. The deal with yeah. uh, child placement uh, issues that they were having. Uh, I don't remember who all else. Sheriff's department, the jail, maintenance. What are they at? There are 2,000 or 2,500. I, I could verify the list for you tomorrow, Jenny, and where everybody's at, who all has cards and what limit they're at. Yeah, that does have to be confusing. I I don't disagree with that. Well, in, in, that, in that case, I'd like to be able to take a look at what has been the history of spending on a monthly basis then. By raising it, are we maxing, are we getting closer and closer to the max every month? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if if it, if it went up to two thousand and now average spending is eighteen hundred a, a month, if I go to three thousand, is it going to be twenty eight hundred dollars a month? Paul, did you have something? I just want to say, as one of the credit card holders that doesn't, you're, you're making charges that are part of the budget. <clears throat> not, it's not just twenty five dollars extra. If I'm making a charge, I'm looking at the line item that's going to be assigned, and that's money, even though it's filtering through the credit. I know which line is coming out of in my budget. <laughs> so the 2,500, you shouldn't be maxing it out all that very often because I know where my budgets are at. So if I got a hotel and training, I know that I've only got X number of dollars. You're not gonna get overages outside of my budget on the credit card unless I do something wrong or make a mistake. Correct, we just got, want to make sure that with that convenience doesn't come overspending. We under, the, doesn't get out of control. Understand it's got to come from the budget, but just making sure that it's not uh, going beyond the budget line. It's going to be recorded on each one that comes through with a prepay. Yes. The limit itself to me doesn't cause a concern. It's the department head's responsibility to make sure that money's in the line item that that charge is coming out of. So very rarely do we get close to the max. It's only when we have like a hotel with two or three employees and they're all going to the same conference. Most of the time, it's like for a piece of equipment, it's two hundred dollars. But we have had some some over budget. We were over budget on a few things fairly recently. Well, we're getting to the point we're halfway through budget. There's a few things that come over budget, whether it's on the credit card or not. I don't know. Um, credit card, like as Karen said, they need to be reported on prepays on everybody's cover sheet, and I have found a few that have not been. So I've already addressed that and working on that. So what would you like, Commissioner Scott, before you make a decision? Well, the other the other thing that bothered me with credit cards at the at the onset of it was that it was an ease, it was very it made it easier to buy outside the county. It made it real easy because Amazon, oh my gosh, I mean, you guys have done claims. You see the Amazon expenses. They're all over the place, you know. I, I've said it. I've said it right from the first day I was a commissioner. We need to shop local as local as we can. I know it takes time. I know that, but those local vendors are taxpayers. I don't disagree. I don't disagree with that. And if we make it easy to go outside the of local spending, what happens? They'll go the easy route. Tim, what's your suggestion? Well, I like uh, Commissioner Scott's idea of at least bringing in the list of cards that we have out there, what the limits are, and then maybe some history on some of those cards. Mm -hmm. You know, this is easy for me to say. It'll be Karen that's got to produce all this, right? But I, I think that's worth you seeing before you make a decision. So you got an idea of where things uh, lie. I have to tell you, I don't have a horse in the race. So wherever you go with this is fine. But we just, uh, uh, after this last incident, uh, that I would bring this to you and we talk about it and if you were interested, then uh, we go ahead and make the move. But I, I think that's good to have that data before you uh, you know, make a definitive answer one way or another. Right, I'd like to see where everybody's credit unit, credit limit is. I guess I 
email just to 10 in the morning. Perfect. Thank so we'll you. table that till next time. Uh, Veterans Affairs Committee appointment. Have, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> totally sorry. Go ahead, Commissioner Simmons. Oh, first sorry. I'm usually saying sorry. <laughs> with this particular instance with the, with the veterans, is this, I mean, if we don't do something now. No, we've, we've taken care of their, um, their issue. Uh, Jeff was able to contact the hotel and they uh, well, were originally requiring the full stay to be paid. They said, well, we'll just take this deposit from you, which helped get them under their limits. So they, they're all taken care of this time. He ran into the same problem last year. And again, with the timing, it didn't help it. I, I don't pretend to understand why it's you know a day or two before the registration closed that these things happen, but it, they do. Uh, but he had the same problem. This uh, particular conference they go to each year is in Madison, Wisconsin. So it's it's not just down to right, Cadillac or something yeah. like that. And it's a week long, and that's that's why it's running into the to the limit. But uh, again, I think maybe a combination of registering earlier or you know, if we, I don't know what all the expenses are that he's putting on this, but I do know it's been a consistent issue for them. Um, you know, another way to do this is, and this is, you know, something you can talk about next time, is uh, you don't have to generally use the credit card. If you register in advance, it can come through regular claims. A check can be written and sent to the venue, and you're you're good that way. Right. Um, but there is sometimes advantage to uh, registering as soon as you can to get the reduced rate on a block of hotel rooms, which sometimes, like with the MAC conference, they tend to run out. So, you know, there's pros and cons to it, but, you know, I like the idea of not rushing into it either and to get that data in front of you so you can see what those trends look like and then decide, is this something we want to go through or is this just a one time, once or twice a year problem? And maybe that's, that's okay. So the bottom line is the earlier you register, the least uh, uh, difficult it is for us. Usually that's true. Yes. Yeah. Anything else? No, that's all. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioner Mayhew, did you have anything else? Okay. Uh, Veterans Affairs Committee appointments. We have Jay Weiss and Mark DeBoer. So there are two openings and two applicants. Um, there was a resignation recently off from the Veterans Board, which is why you see two uh, uh, applicants this time around. Uh, as you go through the materials, you'll see that these candidates have been vetted by the Veterans Affairs Board and by our staff. Uh, so they're matching all the criteria they need to meet for their board. Uh, so if you were willing, these will be on for next week for appointment. Are there two openings on this? Yes. Okay, I have no problem with that. Any other comments, questions? No, I don't see a problem here. At all. I don't see any problem. I don't think Jeff's on the phone, is he? <laughs> um, there's a bunch of minutes in here. Yeah. Was, they're handwritten minutes. I hadn't seen that in a long time. Seven pages. I read them too. No, we'll have that on for uh, next week. August Millage questions. We have six of them on there. Veterans, Transit, Commission on Aging, Emergency Medical Services Equipment, Headley Override, and Jail Operating. Okay, some of these were just born out of conversation from past meetings. You haven't decided, for instance, on a jail or the backup on the Headley uh, to move forward with these. Uh, the veterans... Uh, Current millage is, is to expire this year, so we've got the numbers that they've requested. Uh, transit, um, we had a meeting today with the Transit Committee, and I believe we settled on 0.75. That's, that's the recommendation out of the committee. So that's the number that's already inserted. Commission on Aging, there's uh, needs to be renewed. They've asked to be at that 0.75, which is where they were. The EMS millage is a new one. Uh, they're asking for uh, op, uh, equipment uh, millage for five years, uh, half a mil. Oh. And there you see the correctional facility proposal that was still in its discussion phases. So there are no numbers plugged in for you, but I'll address that again in a second. And that uh, backup Headley restoration proposal, uh, this would be a county only for 10 years. Uh, and the increase uh, is it? Take us back up to 7.2 from the 6.09. And this is one that you would uh, consider only if the May 7th proposal doesn't change. Now, clarification on the calendar for these. Um, the original thought was that you had to uh, you know, adopt this language next Thursday to meet the April 30th deadline. Well, it turns out that April 30th deadline is only the deadline to put the clerk on notice uh, that you intend to put something on the ballot. So there's still another round of meetings before you would have to commit to language. 
So that actually makes it easier. Um, we can go ahead and uh, submit the intent and not any language yet. If May 7th is, is approved, we don't follow up. There's no language then to rescind or take off the ballot. So it, it kind of makes it a little bit cleaner. The last page on the material that you have, I put together a, a calculator, a calculator, a spreadsheet for you so that you get an idea from uh, the level of 0 0.05 mils all the way up to one mil, uh, how much is generated. So uh, if you were interested in going through with the jail millage, for instance, and you wanted to do some fraction of the mill, you can just do the arithmetic and see just how much you know, that would generate based on the uh, most recent taxable value number that was provided a uh, meeting or two ago, uh, equalization. Uh, so that's where we are. Each of these has been reviewed by council already, so they're they're ready to go otherwise. Uh, so that uh, just comes down now to decision from you as to which, if any, or all that you want to put on uh, the ballot. Uh, Commissioner Mayhew did bring the budget for Commission on Aging that was brought up. Um, how, how their budget was and what their uh, balance. Did they have a fund balance on that? Because I found a 990 online, but it might be a year old. Uh, so he he did bring that if anybody would like to see that. So first I've seen the emergency medical service equipment. I guess, have, have, did I miss that somewhere? Have we yeah, talked about it? Yeah, we've been talking about it for a while. For a while, yeah. yeah it's on... The MS board has it been brought to us? Yeah, yeah. When we started talking strategy, it was uh, brought brought in here for August. It's on our. You know, this yeah. was a while ago. We got to this, and it's on there. The EMS equipment. I don't remember seeing that, but I guess has it been like verbiage and in, in what equipment, or has anything been? I guess I don't remember. I, I know they were they were financially hurting. I guess is what equipment are they thinking? Just upgrade. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of equipment need to be upgraded. We have some um, some of the. Current vans are, you know, older with high mileage, and uh, they're they're all we're also trying to, you know, find revenue through grants. Um, but uh, you know, the financial situation that we're in, um, it's not that favorable, and uh, they just really felt that it'd be a smart move to try to try to get a millage for equipment only. I don't know, Paul, would you like to add? So this is an addition to their current one, right? Correct. Do you have anything to add to that, Paul? Are you, you're on the board too? Correct. Yeah, um, I, I can hear what he uh, talks about with that. <clears throat> Obviously, the, the thought is with the current stat, uh, status of you know, mass that the equipment mode would help us that uh, just tonight we were talking about you know, replacing the lift cots. We have several of them that have are past their life cycle and need to be replaced. And we're talking $70,000 alone just for a couple of them. Mm -hmm. uh, so that millage would help stabilize EMS moving forward and it would be able for us to make sure EMS has the equipment to do their job. <clears throat> so that was the idea behind it. Questions, guys? Well, you start? I, I don't see any problem with veterans Transit uh, Veterans Commission on Aging and EMS. They've come to us. They've asked us. Transit. That's that. We're going to have to put that on this year because we have to renew something here. I just uh, the old, the override is is an end case kind of thing. The thing with the August ballot is that. The ballots are going to be huge everywhere. I, every every position in every township is up for re-election. Yeah. State representatives are up. State senator is up. U.S. Senate is up this year. Um, you're, and then proposals. What, uh, Sheriff, you got three in Mills Township? Two fire and a gypsy moth? Yeah. And might and roads library. Library. library added to that library all across the county. Um, it's gonna be a lot. Agreed. There's gonna be a lot. It, it, the voters are gonna have, and then well, all the commissioners too, and all the other counties. The five other counties uh, elected officials. So there's just gonna be. It's gonna take some time to sit in a ballot booth this this time. It's not gonna be like. February, where you just went in and saw three things and, and hit them, you know. 
that's going to yeah. be a lot. And I, and I know that other townships have some. We have rows on, on our list. Can I add to this? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. She says. Were you done, Commissioner Scott? Yeah. Well, go ahead. Now, you, since he's finished, go ahead. So when we first started strategizing for millages, I mean, we knew right away we were looking at voter exhaustion. And that's one of the parts of the strategy is trying to, moving forward, to have different times of these millages so we don't come into a situation like this um, in the future. I mean, another big thing we got to talk about, you know, still tonight is, you know, the direction that we're thinking to head for the possibility of the jail millage. Right, that's that's on there. So I guess, Mike, which ones were we thinking for May? Which ones are we thinking for August? Well, May is done. May is in the books. So what's on exactly for May? Yeah. Uh, we have the Hadley, yeah. Hadley Override. That's what I know. Animal, um, I want to verbalize this. I know. The animal care millage. Yep, and that's it, right? There's a school millage. School millage. I'm seeing for us. For us, yeah, just those two. Yes, that's what I thought. So Hadley was there. So all of these other ones we're looking at August, correct? The one through four. Well, we will see right. if we move forward with them. We'll see them for sure on August. The Veterans of Transit Commission on Aging right. and Emergency Medical Services Equipment. Yes. So take the Hadley off there. That's a go ahead for for May. I'm just well, trying to figure out a time frame on there. Why it's there for August is in case of May failing. That's the only reason it's on that list. Hmm. Can I clarify that? Go ahead. When we talk about down for August. That means it'll just be the county, and we won't try to try to do with the ISD or or the townships. This time we're trying to help the townships too because some of them will have lost uh, a third of their financial budget because of the headley. And we'd like to bring them back up to their one mill. And if that fails, then that's why this is on there, just to bring us back to where we were at 7.2, because now we're at 6.0, something or other. One more comment on that. Go ahead. And the other big change on that is it's not indefinite. It's 10 years. On what? Which one? What are you talking about? So are they? If the, we would have to try for the August Headley. It's only for 10 years. Go ahead, Commissioner Simmons. Did you have something? Well, the indefinite thing. I mean, it's been seven point two mil since before I was born, probably. No, it's after I was born. It's been seventy years. So I'm pretty old. I, I, I forget how old I am. Sixty-five. In yeah. Sixty-five was at a seven point two. So seven point two. So I mean, and that's when it was done indefinite. So I think I don't think we can increase it any more than seven point two mil can we? No. No, we can't. No, that's what I'm getting. Yeah. I'm just saying in ten years it would have to go back to the voters again to make a decision. Well, we may have to go back to the voters sooner than that. Depends what the headley does to us within those ten years. Right. That's fair. I, I, I guess are you looking for a, an open discussion? Are you looking for the amounts? Are you looking for a yay or a nay to to give notice of all of that. a clerk? Yeah. What so direction are you? The, the minimum uh, to do at this point, if any of these that you want to see on the ballot as a minimum next Thursday, you'll need to pass one of those resolutions that puts the clerk on notice that you intend to put these right. on the ballot. And then there's one more round before you have to settle on what the language says. Um, some of these you've uh, vetted quite a bit already. I'll just uh, use the let's use the transit millage, for instance. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion already about 0.75. If you're satisfied with this language as it is now, next Thursday, you can adopt a resolution that sends this language to the clerk and says, please put this on the ballot. So you don't have to go through two steps, uh, but you can. You know, that's, that's the same with any of this, is that correct? That's true with any of these. So if you're satisfied with all these and you want them all to go, we can set you up to do well, that I, next week. How about if we take these one by one right now? The veterans, I, 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 absolutely. I mean, that's that's Jeff takes care of all of that. Um, I think that's a no-brainer if that's the amount that he says it's needed. Um, pardon me? I agree. I think we're all yep. definitely uh, support the veterans in this uh, county. You guys agree with the veterans? Yes. What? Of what's course your, I do. What's, I'm waiting for your response. Of course I do. Thank you, Commissioner Simmons. Yeah. Okay, so next we have the transit. Um, at the 0.75, I, I think you guys have evaluated this. You guys have a board. You've discussed this. This is what you guys have come up with. Again, we verbalized at the last meeting that if we look at a fund balance next year and, and the state has provided more funding than the, you guys were not anticipating, the fund, 
and we cannot take as much out if not needed. But if the 0.75 is what you guys feel you need at this point in time, I, that's your guys' decision to take to voters. And, and yeah, let's, yes. And you did, um, we do have the right not to collect everything. And this board has, not me on it, but this board has done that before. It's not collecting millage. Correct. Because the service wasn't provided for the whole time, so they took part of that millage back. Well, so it's not as though we have to collect the whole millage. We could collect just part of that millage. What we requested, um, which I don't think you were, is, is each one of these come in, the department heads come in with their fund balance. Yep. Um, to give an explanation of where they're at and why right. we're continuing to collect that or what is needed. Yes. So um, I'm okay with the transit as well. Are you Commissioner Scott? I am. Commissioner Wilsey? Absolutely. Commissioner Mayo? Okay. Yes. Commission on Aging? Yes. Agreed. The fund balance? What's your fund balance? They said around 200, but they'll be three months without. And for the next year, they take that to get going again. So that it, it shows that it's a fund balance, but it's not. I talked to the lady today. That's what she told me. Again, I'm a huge advocate of this. I utilize these services a lot. Uh, they do a lot for our residents. I, I told that. her that I was tickled they had one. In a better shape than we are. We got <laughs> Oh, a fund balance? Yeah, to pull back on. Now, and this hasn't changed. This is what they've been collecting, correct? Well, yes. they, they've been um, rolled back, just like everyone else. And you can see this is a 10-year proposal. And I believe their prior millage was also 10 years, started at 0.75, but then was rolled back, just like ours has been. This will actually reset them at the 0.75, and then that whole process starts over. Say that again? I'm sorry. So when their original uh, millage was passed at yeah. 0.75, they're subject to the Headley rollback, just like our operating funds okay. are. And so um, I don't know exactly what they are right now, but it's something less than 0.75. Oh, there it is. It's 0.7486. That's what I... So this is a 0.0014 increase, uh, but resets them at, the, at that 0.75 again, and then the rollbacks will start and go on for 10 years. Wow. This is approved. Questions? Did you I have no, aging? I have no problem with commission aging. Commissioner Woodsy? Good. Next, we have the emergency medical services equipment. Thoughts, comments? Commissioner Woodsy? Um, if I could do this again, I would have asked Justin, you know, our new director, to come in and talk to you guys on this. Um, I definitely feel it's something that we need. Um, Again, you know, there's been a lot of changes out there in this past year. Again, financially not in a very favorable position, but we all know the importance of the service that they they bring to the county. Um, I really think it would be vital to be able to get this passed and, and really help to be able to increase some of the uh, the older equipment that we have and get back to where we need to be. Commissioner Scott, I understand why they're asking for it. I, I'll go ahead. What is I don't have a problem putting it on the ballot. What is going on? Okay. I don't know. Huh? Commissioner Simmons, I'm go so ahead. Right wow. now or something. Wow. Commissioner Simmons, let's go forward, guys. I'm fine. You okay with that? Mm -hmm. They're gonna have to sell it to the voters. Uh Commissioner Mayhew? It's back now. That was weird. What's their fund balance? Uh at the EMS. Yeah. Uh, I was going to ask. <laughs> we asked. What is we, have, we have a month and a half. So we don't even have. We don't even have two months of fucking available. <laughs> Karen, did you have something? I do. I just noticed that on some of these uh, proposals, it's only mentioning two of the DDAs when we have four. So uh, we have agreements with two of those DDAs not to collect from special villages. Okay. Yeah. No. Thank you. I just wanted to make yeah. sure everything was. Bogomol and Rose City. Okay. So only collects That's correct. Counties. Well, I'm sorry. So, like Paul said, we have a right around about a month and a half. So, our fund balance is good. Do you, well, have you guys collected any grants in the past year? Uh, yes, for uh, new ambulance. Right. Yeah, several New ambulance and also for the um inboard uh forget what they call them, chest the chest automatic chest compression. Oh yeah. Those things. Yeah. Bob, Bob Dak uh, does a lot with EMS and fire. 
Well, I know we've gotten a couple in this past year since I've been on board. Funding from the state, does EMS get any? Direct funding from the state outside of grants, no. You get the Medicaid and Medicare, which you're familiar with mm -hmm. as far as the payouts and what they're, I know they were part of a study they told us through trying to get some of those numbers changed because the reimbursement rates are so low. Mm -hmm. uh, but direct funding from the state for EMS services, I'm not aware or going to talk at this point that we receive anything like that. Not that I'm aware of either. Karen, do you know? I, I would have to agree with him. Okay. From when EMS used to be part of the county before becoming a mm -hmm. party, I don't recall them ever receiving state funding other than grants. It's weird that the transit does, which is great, but EMS doesn't. But, um, so you guys have no problem with that being put on? Okay. So that'll be on the August ballot. Correct. Okay. Have the override. We'll see that in May. Well, so the sequencing is this. Um, you meet uh, next week, which uh, is the last meeting before the notice of intent to the clerk um, has to be issued, which is April 30th. Then you'll have a committee, the whole meeting. I think that meeting's May 4th, if I'm not mistaken on my dates. Uh, and then the following Tuesday is the election. Uh, then you have one more meeting, uh, it would be May 11th then, right, if my math's right, where you could then decide whether to submit language to the clerk to actually be put on the ballot. So what next week would do is reserve a spot if you decide that you want to do it, but wait for that election to occur before you make the final decision whether you proceed. So I would suggest doing that, that if, if you really want the... Uh, uh, backup plan is that we do a resolution of intent next week and then wait for the result of the election and then you have one more regular meeting to decide if you want to put this language forward. It's not needed if it passes, obviously. So it's, um, it would just save you the effort of having to pass yet another resolution to rescind a resolution putting this forward, you know, if you do that ahead of time. See, I, I will struggle if it goes down in May, I will struggle putting it on again in August putting another one of these, um, which we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there, but putting another one of these millages um, in jeopardy. I, I definitely will struggle struggle with that. So I guess we'll see what May, what May brings. Go ahead. But this one that he's talking about is different than the one that's on there now. It's, got some, I, it's a little shorter, but. Go ahead. That's all I have to say. It's not. It's not. The, it's not the same. It was different. So, what if it passes in May? You still want to put this on? No, no, no. If it passes in May, we won't. Okay. What I'm saying is, if it doesn't pass in May, this new one isn't going to be the same as the one for May. Which makes sense. That's all I'm saying. Well, it's, I mean, I thought it sounded like you were saying it was the same thing. Well, I, no matter what, it, it, if if it goes down in May. I'm going to really struggle even putting anything remotely like this back on in August to me, because to me, that's the, vo the voters have, have spoken. They would, hopefully it doesn't, hopefully it passes and we don't have to have this conversation again. But putting that millage back on again in August could put one of these other ones, whether it's Veterans Transit Commission on Aging. I agree. In jeopardy. I agree. That's not something that at this point in time, uh, I believe I would be willing to do. And just to muddy the waters a little bit more for you, <laughs> if um, it, Commissioner um, David, just to follow up on your thought, I, I get it. You know, you maybe putting this on there it maybe detracts from one of the others. The way this works, and and we'll maybe call Randy in here to confirm, but my conversation with Randy is uh, that when these pass, that you can't collect on them until the following calendar year. So no matter what, it's a 2025 July when this ends up being collected and still impacts our 25 budget that mm -hmm. way. So what I'm getting at is if you wanted to wait, and please don't make this decision tonight, I mean, you've got time to think about it, but if you wanted to wait until November on something like this, that could happen, but just understand we're gonna adopt a budget ahead of that that um will you know depend you know maybe on, on something like this so if we were counting on that being passed you might be amending a budget uh, in you know january that makes some dramatic reductions uh, 
but I mean, that's that's something to just think about. Again, you don't have to make a decision right now, but strategically where these are placed, that might be another option to think about. Okay, Commissioner Scott. Well, I, I agree with you. Um, the thing is the voter, we already know the voter has misconceptions about a lot of things and, they, and perceptions. When they look at this stuff, they think the counties always are the county. Okay, they think they think they. We already know people get mixed up between nine one one and EMS constantly. Yes, they do. And they all think that the county owns them all. No, we don't. I get it, but they think that it is. So when they go in that ballot booth, you know they're looking at all these. Oh, geez, the county's trying to get me for this, this, or this, this. You know, and if we keep piling more onto it, I think we're we're jeopardizing. Not only our stuff, but I think we jeopardize some of the township stuff too. We got, we got to understand that we're right. part of, we're partners with them too in this in this thing. Okay. I know they're not coming to our meeting talking to us about it, but um, we got to stay cons thinking about that. Commissioner Wilson, yeah, I agree with both of you guys big time. Um, I mean, obviously coming right out of the gates here, it's extremely frustrating the way that wordage is for the Headley. You know, that right out right out of the gates has not helped us at all. Um, you know, and we are trying to educate, you know, the public as best as we can. Um, you know, the tours of the townships and everything that we're trying to do. And I think these next three weeks, we're going to see a lot of exposure on this, but it hasn't helped. And then, you know, the animal shelter, there's all sorts of questions on that. There's a lot of negativity on that. So... We're fighting that plus with looking at all of these millages, you know, ahead of us. And then we're even in the talks of, th of thinking about, you know, a jail millage. And I agree with what you said. I mean, we can't put a jail millage on for August. No. I mean, we're our, you know, our constituents are are fighting hard enough as it is with inflation and, and all of these costs that, that they have that they have they didn't have years ago. And now we're putting this, you know, all on them. But the bottom line is, and you guys, whoever comes to meetings and will hear me say is our people need to know our, our financial situation. We need to be very clear with that. You know, we have no money. We are broke. And if we do not get the headley to pass and we can generate more money, we're going to have to make major cuts to this, to the county service. I, I didn't, I didn't say anything about the jail. I was talking about the headley going back on and not. No, I understand. I'm just talking the jail because I mean, it's on our list. And Correct. That's to, next to discuss. But, and I, and I said, I agree with you what you're saying. Oh, I thought you, okay, go ahead. Uh, Commissioner uh, Simmons. They talk about the county, county, county putting these villages on. Uh, when they when they look look when they look at the proposals on the ballot, look at the very top. It'll say counties, school ISDs. It'll say county. It'll say EMS. It'll tell you who's putting that millage on. If we're putting the millage on, it'll say county. We're not putting I'm only just, a couple of these millages on. I'm just not saying. Putting. Right. I'm just saying it's not always what's written up there is what they read. They don't read. People don't read. Okay, hold on. They don't read. Listen to oh. me. Read the top of the ballot. So okay. don't be putting it on the ballot. All right. I I would like to table the Headley, the number five, Headley override. I just I, I'm not comfortable making a decision about that right now. But that's that's again, that's my opinion. It's already a go ahead at this point in time for, for May. Um I'm not comfortable revisiting that. November's wide open. We've left November wide open all this time. Right, we have plenty of time to talk about that. Again, I'd like to table it for right now. I'd like to talk about the jail operating. Are you guys okay with that? Yep. Millage? I'm fine no. with that. No what? Put the jail millage on? Uh, that's what we're talking about now. What are your thoughts about putting on? I uh, I guess, I guess, Sheriff, and I don't know if you wanted to, you guys were going to do some investigating and get back to us. Did you have anything? On this millage, have you seen the verbiage here? Where is it? There's no numbers in there yet. I looked at it last night. Where well, we're looking at that, and we're, we think the verbiage is fine, but we feel that we should ask for, if anything at all, one to one and a half, and no more than that. That's our feeling, John. Thoughts, Commissioner Simmons. So we're looking at this right now of, of if we're going to put it on. Put it on either August or November. My comment is this: even if we pass the headley, we're still going to be behind the eight ball. If we don't go for a full millage on that, and the prices keep going up every year, we're going to pay the price price later. Because then we're going to be right back where we are today. 
just just seeing seeing what history's been. So yeah. long since I was commissioner last time, it's increased over a million dollars or a million dollars, let's say. He put yeah, he put a he put a table on here that was pretty informative of the cost and the revenue and the expenditures for the jail. Thoughts, Commissioner Rahu? <laughs> we're we're gonna put a millage on here so we can pick up dogs, so we got a place to put them. We're talking about correction. We're talking about the jail. Uh, I am. Okay. I am. But we, we we have to have a place to put the dogs, or we're not gonna pick them up. That's what we're told, correct? If the dog pound closes up, the I dog warden can't pick up the dogs. We if we close the jail, where are we going to put the prisoners? We're not going to pick them up. So right now we're talking about a millage. That's what I'm saying is, is we're all on board to have a spot to put the dogs. Okay, yep. But not for the people. <laughs> well, we got to be able to afford it. So we're trying to figure out how we can afford it. I, I know this, and that's why we're, this is what we're trying to do. Correct. So your thoughts about having putting letting the people decide as far as putting the millage up? Correct. I mean, the people are are the ones that are going to pay. Mm -hmm. The working people pay. Let them have the say. Do you have a Do you have an idea for an amount? I do not. They they said talking a mill and a half, but like you said, we we have we have got more money from this last five percent increase, and I understand it's not when you spread it, it's going to be thin. Mm -hmm. But nobody's talking that. But we are going to get more, somewhere around three hundred thousand. But we also have the five hundred thousand dollars of ARPA funds that we have to are going to lose. Absolutely, I mean it, it's going to be tough, but. <laughs> my theory is is if <laughs> we we care enough that we're gonna pick the dog up and put it in the in the, in the jail. <laughs> you gotta do something with the people. Mm -hmm. So we can't pick them up. Commissioner Simmons? That's really not a true statement. We can pick them up. And just like other people have outsourced their prisoners to us, we can outsource our outsource our prisoners to someplace else and we will save a lot of money. I would say we save and I'm I'm speculating a million dollars a month. Well those numbers are numbers we would need in front of us. I understand. But I put it out there um, 10, 10, 12 years ago or whatever it was, how long ago it was. And um I said then what was gonna happen and here it is it's happening. Commissioner Scott. Um well as far as the the, the animal services First of all, it doesn't go to a, any certain entity yet. We have to assign that to that entity. Now that the Ray family, uh, the Ray family uh, uh, service center there has has said that if they didn't get a millage, they would continue, but it would be taught. We already have a contract with them. They would continue that, until they couldn't. Yeah, they would continue until they couldn't. There are other counties that will take our dogs. There is not a We're roster. Pay. Yeah, we'll pay. Yeah, we'll pay. Uh, Aranac takes them. Um, uh, 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 Ross County can take them. It will pay. But Mr. You know, Wilson said we're broke. We got no money. What are we going to pay them with? Well, we have some. We have. We have. We have money right now in the budget that we're paying. Uh, the Ray, the Ray people right now, we got money and we're doing that too. Was, now, if we got to cut back on the amount of dogs we pick up, that may happen. That may happen. Um, right now, I think we're 50 dogs a year or something. I can't remember what the contract was. If 50 dogs plus, then there's the per dog charge after that. And we base that on, on historical facts. Um, uh, you know, there was there was a time when we didn't have any animal control at all. So, you know, and that may happen down the road too. It may. It, it was an analogy, and it was it was uh, it was. But I think it. I don't think you're. I don't think it's fair to compare the dogs to. It's not apples for apples. They're not comparing the same thing. What do you mean by that? Uh, we're not. We're not. We're not putting priority on picking up animals and not picking up people. 
for oh, housing animals and, oh, the, and housing people. That is I, correct. I just, it's, it's, it's just totally different. It was an analogy, and, and I'm going to agree with Commissioner Mayo to an extent. I, I agree. I think, people, I think the people need to decide. Um, I, I think whether or not the jail uh, continues. Uh, we've got our jail bond uh, amounts on here. We've got our revenues and expenditures from 2018 to 2024 for the public to see. Um, if they're saying one mil and that will cover us, um, I, I, I'm comfortable well, with that. Well, it won't cover us. It won't I, cover us. Guys, I wasn't done. And our department heads are, are sitting here saying who, who we trust. They run the department. They handle their budget. They're saying one mil is what they need. That's what they're saying they need. We trusted these other ones to come to us with the 0.75s um, and the 0.5 for the medical equipment. I, that's what they're saying they need. That's what they say they need. And now we have to talk about, and I don't think you need a decision tonight, um, when, when putting this on, whether it be August or November. The decision time would start next week on Thursday. If you want to put it on in August, we have to notify the clerk. Okay. We don't have to have the language ready yet, but we have to notify the clerk. I think it should be on in August. The heavily I say no, the jail job robbery, jail operating. I, I, go ahead, Commissioner Scott, you had something. I I I well, first of all. First of all, I think if we're going to do a millage, we need we need to cover the cost of of operating. I agree. And and uh, uh, anything other than that is a band aid. And and we're we're telling ourselves that we're going to go back and say, well, we asked for one. Two years later, we're going to go back and say, I got to have another half. And and we're just going to keep band-aiding the thing over and over and over again. We know the operating costs are going up. Um, we're we're trying we're trying different things. We we we've, we've asked the sheriff to start charging for inmates. We're not seeing the revenue coming in yet. Um, if I have if I had something I could track. But right now we're talking hundreds of dollars coming in and not thousands of dollars. Um, you know, I, 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 I just don't, I don't like a Band-Aid on it. Um, huh? You missed it. Oh, can you, I just, uh, let's see. Um, so I think the stakeholders of the sheriff and the, and the jail, you know, they're saying one or 1.5, and that's just going to offset costs. I mean, I would imagine they know what these costs are. That isn't going to pay to pay to, you know, keep the jail going where we're not, it's not costing the county every year. It's just going to offset the cost. And Commissioner Scott made a point, you know, just to put a band-aid on things, you know, we, you know, we're at a point right now financially where uh, to put a band-aid on anything is, in my eyes, not a smart, smart move. Um, you know, we made it very clear that if the Headley passes, well, we have never committed to say that that's going to go to help offset jail costs. That's going to help offset, you know, we'll actually be able to keep the level of somewhat level of where our county government is, is going. But we're still going to have to make cuts in September because ultimately we need to get rid of that negative cash flow. We need a fund balance. Um, but agreeing with what the sheriff and under sheriff said, if we do do this millage at one or one, I would say, you know, 1.5, it's, it's just an offset. I mean, if 2.5 would be just, I mean, to ask 2.5 with everything we have going on right now in August, and you're concerned about putting another headley on to not lose any of these other millages. No way. I mean, our, our voters would they'd be ready to throw in the towel at us. Please explain. Well, I mean, to ultimately to do this right, to get a jail millage, we should ask for 2.5. That's ultimately what we need. Our costs at the jail just continue to go up. I mean, they've cost, it costs a million dollars almost more now than it did in 2019. And all those numbers are just continuing to rise. Less people are going to jail. I mean, we are going to see some more, an increase in revenue with the lodging. But that's going to take time. That's not a huge number. Hopefully, our tickets go up a little bit. Hopefully, our um, I think right right now all you tickets need tickets aren't paying for the tickets. Right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. 
I think right now, um, all you need is, is are we agreeable to move forward with, uh, to the clerk's office at putting this on in August? I, 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 I you say no, that's no com commissioner Simmons, not putting the jail on in August. Can I make another option? Commissioner? Sure. Well, like Tim said, I mean, all, in September, we have to, we have to have a balanced budget, but we can also amend our budget anytime throughout the year. So another option we could do would put the jail millage on in November. And that puts us back. Then we're at, next least, FY. at least four year, four months from August budget. What was that? Put us in a new FY. November is in the new FY. Which, which it is. We can amend it, but then we're even further in the hole. That's right. So, uh, uh, under sheriff. For the point of conversation, I think you're here right now. We're just committing to putting the language on. Correct. I think for the point of discussion, if we went through an exercise and I get some help in Tim's spare time, <clears throat> we could put a, an estimate together between different percentages, the one, the one point five, and the revenue. Put that in front of you, so we can <clears throat> then have another conversation on form of what what we would be asking the voters. I think two point two point five is going to turn them off, but I think in order to actually do that is to get some of the revenues together, put 1.5 in there and see what the total number will be versus the budget. We also have the reduced budget from the layoffs already to work with. So the board actually has a table on their um, iPads that breaks that out. So we if they wanted to do two, I mean, we've got the math here, we can do it. So one mil is going to be about 1.1 million, one and a half would be about 1.6, you know, give or take a little bit. Uh, and then we've got all the variable there if you want to do one by five, and we can figure that out too. So we've got a rough idea at least of so what we're going to think. If we put those actually into numbers, which yeah, it is on here. The housing is the housing fees a factor in that revenue? Um, it's um, as Commissioner Scott said, at this point, the trend is hundreds of dollars, but we don't have enough experience yeah. yet with what, what that's going to bring in to really. You know, Put a number yeah. to it, and if it got to ten thousand, I mean that would be a great number for that line. But for the overall offset for the jail, it's a drop in the bucket. I get, I get that. I'm just saying we could do the exercise of putting revenues plus one point five to see how close we are, and for the band aid type of thing, and factor in some of those before you actually make a decision of putting a percentage. I, I think right. I think I mean we could go on and on and on with this conversation, and we're going to continue it. It will be definitely be beyond every conversation between now and in that time. I think again, right now, what you're looking for is us to reserve a spot in August. Answer yes or no for August, Commissioner Simmons. To reserve a spot? Yes. That's not to put it on. That is to. Is to reserve the spot. To put it on. Yeah. It doesn't mean it will be on. Still have to make another resolution that passed language. So it's not on until you pass that second resolution. And doesn't mean you can't change your mind. Remember, we did this. Yes. Commissioner Scott, yes, really, really. No, uh, I, I just answered yes to your. I, I know, yeah. but we, okay. we, we crossed that bridge already. Yes right. or no to hold a spot for August for this. And then we're moving forward. Do you want me to come back to you? No. The answer is no. Okay, Commissioner Mayhew. Yes. My answer is yes. Commissioner Scott. No. Commissioner Wil Wilty. Oh, um, I mean, also, I, yes or I no? Would like, I, no, I want to, I have something. Go to ahead. Do, okay. Go ahead. Sure. Um, talk to me. I would like to, I would like the voters to have any on this jail. Um, but, you know, up to this point, these last two, three months, there's been all this talk about voter exhaustion, all these millages, all these millages. And now come May, we're going to throw on another millage regarding our jail on, on top of this. In May? Well, that's when they're going to start. They don't, our, our people don't know about this right now. It's never been discussed. Oh, but it won't be on. I guess I'm missing. It'll be on August now. Start going out. We're going to go to our townships in Maine. Like, oh, by the way, now we're going to put on another millage for for August. I mean, it's going to be an explosion, an absolute explosion. 
<clears throat> I know you're you're waiting for my answer, Jenny. I, I have the right to talk. Okay, I appreciate. Ahead. We have a large agenda. We that's have fine. Things. That's fine. Well, that's what we're here to do. Your answer is yes or no. Do you want to see this on and off? I have the right to talk, so I appreciate you. Not and I have the right to control this. So your answer is yes or no, and that is my job. Yes, but I would appreciate if you respect Thank the you. fact that I can talk when I can Next, talk. Next, we have second quarter budget adjustments. Tim? Okay. Um, we've got a uh, document in front of you that goes through the various lines that I'm uh, going to recommend that we make adjustments to. I'll just hit the highlights because a lot of these load away are nickel and dime, so we don't really need to spend a great deal of time on those. But on the general fund revenue side, uh, on the positive end, there was uh, uh, revenue received from the state, the marijuana annual license fee that we did not budget for, and it's coming in at 59086 uh, also, that uh, local community stabilization um, line, this is um, to echo what I mentioned in the first quarter. I have no idea how they're calculating what revenue we received, but another check showed up for $28,076 you know, where we did den den deny the state, right? So we'll, we'll accept that. I have yet to find a formula to tell me just exactly how much Ogema County would receive for this. Last year, we had an estimate based on the prior year, based on 22, and it was way under what actually came in. Uh, I'm sorry, our estimate was way over what actually came in. So I, I don't I don't get it. And I haven't found anybody yet that can explain it to me. So as these uh, payments are made, you'll see these adjustments. And at least uh, this way, I think it's a little safer for us than to try to second guess exactly what that revenue will be and then count on it and have it not show up. On uh, the second page, and you've got uh, the, the next uh, document over the actual lines that go with each one of these. Uh, but on page two, election reimbursement grant, we understand that all of the expenses that we had for the February election are going to be reimbursed. And so this is our estimate right now about what that would be. Uh, I suspect it would be more than what this estimate is, but again, it's going to come down to what uh, the state deems as appropriate and what's not. But to offset those additional expenses, I think it's important to at least put a placeholder in right now for what we expect that grant to be. District court ordinance and fines and costs. I'm at this point going to recommend an adjustment to drop that by about 29000 based on where we are at the halfway point of the year. Uh, and it's... Um, it's a pretty low number that's sitting in there right now. Um, I don't expect there'd be a great bit of change uh, moving forward based on what we've seen happen in the past. I'm gonna jump down on page four. There is an additional grant that came in for emergency management at 9,900, so that's being put in here. And then uh, the airport uh, payroll reimbursement, uh, they're reimbursing 100%, but they've added a part-time position this year and some other expenses um, that go with that. And so that uh, revenue will go up, but that's truly a wash. That's not, not anything that's going to generate anything extra for the county. So the total increase in revenue for the second quarter will be $142,150. On the expense side, uh, hitting the, the high points, uh, drop down first to the contract services uh, on the 262. That's uh, one of those election reimbursed uh, Expenses. In fact, everything that starts with a 101 262 is what was used to come up with that grant that we expect is going to be uh, reimbursed. Uh, a number that might change between now and next Thursday. Uh, on page 10, you start the district court expenses. And in this case, as you know, we've got um, Danielle from Ross Common County filling in in that court administrator role. She's not taking the wage. Uh, but the travel is has gone up. So at this point, and I'm not uh, confirmed from the court, but we're kind of running out of time to fill that position for this year. So rather than continue to carry that expense in the budget, this amendment would take it out, but would increase that travel expense that we talked about a meeting or two ago uh, that's been incurred. So uh, I will confirm, though, with the court before... Uh, putting together the final resolution. If they think they're going to have uh, a new court administrator, like in the fourth quarter or something like that, I'll, I'll make that adjustment. Uh, on page 11, that health insurance one uh, for the uh, prosecuting attorney's office. Uh, we have uh, uh, one of two employees. One has been a dependent on the other's um, health insurance. 
uh, over the years, well, they're switching now. Uh, so this employee will be the primary and the other employee will be the dependent. So it ends up being a wash. It's just a matter of which department uh, uh, gets uh, the expense for that. Uh, oh boy, page 14, this is what I feared might happen. Uh, we had that grant from Dow for $25,000 for that snowmobile purchase uh, back, uh, gosh, it was in August or September when that grant came through. And I raised the alarm at that point uh, with um, uh, Officer, Officer Better saying, you know, we're right on the line for the fiscal year. So the revenue has come in, try to make that purchase in fiscal year 23 so that it washes out. Well, unfortunately, the auditor circled that and said, no, that purchase actually came in fiscal year 24, so made the adjustment. So we've got to show that expense in 24 now, even though the revenue has already come in in 23. So that's that's why that expense has gone up. We've, it actually is paid for with the grant, but because of the uh, activity between the two uh, fiscal years that uh, being right on the line, we get to pay for that in this fiscal year. In the, the jail, the medical contract service, there was also an adjustment uh, by the auditor. One of our payments uh, was made in uh, September, which actually paid for the October bill for jail medical. So that got added. Plus, we made the decision a couple of months ago to uh, pay that difference in that uh, liability insurance. And so now all those numbers are in. That's why you're seeing that increase. The part-time on the airport, I already mentioned that washes out. Now the very last line, the defined contribution plan forfeiture, that's a negative expense. Don't ask me why, how that math works, but that's just how we've been told this has to be booked. It kind of works like a revenue, but we have to show it as an expense. It's a negative expense. So you see that here and we'll kind of watch that to see if it grows in the coming year. So overall for the expenditure, total expenditures would increase at $151,245. What does that do overall? That's about a $9,095 um, increase in expenditure is what it works out to. Uh, but uh, on, on the good side, and re remember the angst you went through adopting this budget back in September. Uh, we did adopt it so that there would be a fund balance. So as we sit right now, the projection would be a fund balance of 356895 Now, some gray rhinos on the horizon. What's a gray rhino? Well, that's something that we observe that maybe will come back to uh, be a problem for us uh, later on this year. You know, always monitoring the MERS bill. Uh, we did have to make the adjustment to comply with the contract on two employees who were in the wrong division. They were moved to the correct division, but that did impact the uh, expense now for that division. I don't know yet if that full expense is now paid or if this is going to be an ongoing expense. It just seems like every year we get bit by something like this uh, with MERS. So we're going to monitor that uh, and obviously keep you posted as uh, uh, the year goes on. And I already mentioned the district court. Don't know exactly yet what the plan is uh, with that position. We do have another issue, though, uh, that the state legislature is going to have to deal with, and that concerns uh, court fines and fees. Uh, there is, uh, you might recall, a conversation from a couple of years ago, a thing called the Cunningham uh, case, where the courts were, uh, the challenge was the courts weren't supposed to be able to, you know, assess certain fines and costs to fund the court. Uh, yeah, that, that's all well and good, but the state has the opportunity through legislation to fix that, but if they don't fix it, then the courts can't impose those fines and costs anymore, and that impacts our budget. It doesn't impact the state budget, it impacts our budget significantly. <laughs> that has not been resolved yet in the, the sunset on the, our current uh, process. I believe it expires. If it's not at the end of April, it's at the end of May, but it's it's coming quickly. And this, as you know, the legislature at the pace they move, the likelihood of them getting anything taken care of before then is not very high. In communications that you'll see on the agenda for next week, you'll see one from the state court administrator explaining to all the judges, uh, here's how we're going to handle this. Uh, you're not going to be able to impose these fees after a certain uh, date. There are some maneuvers the courts can do to help uh, lessen the blow, hopefully. Uh, but they're planning right now for the, the legislature not being able to act in time to save this. So that could potentially be a significant issue for us. 
I would hope because of their delays that the state would make up for any harm that might be caused to the counties. But you know how that goes. And maybe they will, maybe they won't. Uh, we'll see. So those are a couple of things that we're, we're going to continue to monitor. Uh, certainly by the time third quarter comes around, a couple of these will be a lot more in focus and we'll be able to make those adjustments accordingly. So just definitely wanted to watch those, that, uh, that court fine and fee issue. Pay attention to the MAC alerts when they go out. Uh, and they probably are going to be the best source right now for keeping us as, uh, as current as we can be. The rest of these uh, that you see uh, are the special funds. Uh, a couple of them, uh, for instance, the, the land bank has had a lot of activity, um, and these are all, uh, you see both the revenues and expenditures here, so all the expenditures are offset with uh, revenues at the land bank. The other big one is the housing program. Uh, we finally have gotten a handle on their uh, revenue stream and the grants that they've received. Uh, we're struggling uh, dealing with the state's uh, authentication on some of these grants, but um, that, that should not impact any of the funding that we see uh, that's in here. But I do want to point out in almost all these funds, particularly the larger ones, you're seeing uh, some very, uh, very good numbers on interest uh, that's earned on, on the various funds. I do want to draw your attention to the ARPA fund. As soon as I can find it, I can page you on. it's on page four toward the middle. It's on page 41, the American Rescue Plan. The interest income alone uh, for this, and I'm projecting now for the remainder of the year, but based on what we've seen for the first six months, about a $73,500 uh, bump in uh, wow. the interest that's been earned. And you'll see that that's throughout. Uh, it's not just uh, this fund, but throughout these funds. You see the opioid settlement fund increasing uh, by uh, over 2,000 as well. And just, uh, again, compliments to Karen. I mean, these are incredible numbers that we're seeing on investments. Uh, and, uh, being right on top of that, you can see we're, we're definitely seeing some uh, benefit from that. So uh, again, a great job uh, by the treasurer. So um, that's the nickel version. When you see the resolution, I think it'll be much easier to comprehend each of these you know, than looking at them. But you know, this is the process we have to go through each line and figuring out, uh, you know, where, where we stand. It's nice seeing these numbers in this breakdown. Good job, Karen. Uh, any questions for Tim? Commissioner Simmons? No. Commissioner Mayo? No. Commissioner Scott? No. Um, uh, I'm, I'm seeing outside the, in the general, in the general, I mean, we're really not talking a whole lot. So many things are awash um, in revenue coming in to cover expenses going out, uh, whether it's airport or grants or or stuff like that, and then of course in the special, it's in the specials so that's so much of that. So, but I I like seeing that we're we're right here on top of it at the six month point. So, Commissioner Woodsy, oh, all set. Well, I, I, so you need a resolution for next week, correct? Right. Nothing looks out of the ordinary. It's nice seeing everybody staying on track. So, okay. Next we have the MCOG membership referral referred from housing committee. When the housing committee met, um, Penny Paella has been attending uh, the MCOG red team and the red stands for regional economic development <laughs> team. And they allow her part to participate because we're part of the MCOG region. And I don't recall just exactly how many counties there are, but it's it's a pretty big region. Um, most of these, I see most, a lot of the counties are paying dues to this organization. And why this came up at uh, housing committee is that the MCOG also has a housing uh, uh, group that, that works regionally. And uh, the discussion was that might be of value for us to be a participant in MCOG. And they suggested that we bring their executive director, Sue Fortune, in to a future committee, the whole meeting, to have that conversation. But before I extend that invitation, I want to make sure that you're interested, because if there's no interest here, there's no sense in wasting their time coming making the presentation to you. Um, their dues, um, I was way over what I thought when I mentioned it uh, at the housing committee. I thought it was an excess of 8000 but uh, contacting the director, she said for Ogemaw County, the annual dues would be 3,500. I did receive an email from Penny today and she says it's 2,100. I'm gonna go to the 
what the executive director told me was 3,500. And uh, so just if that's something you're interested in, I would be happy to, to call Sue and get her in here for a future committee of the whole. But if that's not an expense that you have any interest in at all, uh, again, I don't want to have her come in just, just to have a talk. Do you know what the benefits would be? Well, there's um, quite a few things that they do. I know that um, the regions that I'm used to working with do an awful lot in uh, the land use planning type area. So they'll do a lot of uh, you know, mapping studies, you know, wetland studies. They do a lot of economic development work. They're a pass-through organization for a lot of federal monies that way. Uh, but I'm not that familiar with MCOG to be able to tell you exactly what all they do. It's kind of like MAC, only a, just kind of a different focus where MAC is working with Lansing and Lansing legislation. They're doing things like working with MISHDA and working with EDC, MEDC, and groups like that. Um, we just uh, got some email in from MDOT and some grant work that they're doing. We don't obviously do the roads, but they, they try to coordinate a lot of things like that. Uh, but it would, uh, if you're interested, I mean, if you think this is something that might benefit us, it would be good to have Sui here to really go through the array of uh, services that they offer. And Mr. Wilson, you're on the housing committee. Would you like to go ahead? Yeah. Um, so we had a, a housing committee meeting this past Tuesday, and the biggest challenges that we're having right now is we're just trying to navigate through the process. Um, starting this when when Mishda um, approved these plans, that the you know for us we're in the Northeast Housing Partnership. And uh, you guys have heard me talk about this, and I'm on the steering committee for us. We were really hoping that this target Alpina, who is the fiduciary for the Northeast Housing Partnership, would really be able to kind of consult with us to really help us give more directions for these grants. Because this really truly is a great opportunity right now to take advantage and really try to get this huge housing shortage issue that we have in Ogema County. We all know we build houses, you know, those are all taxes that will come back to us. Um, so we do have a great opportunity right now, but what, where we're struggling is, is we had uh, Target Alpina come and talk with us and they gave us a big pitch basically about in order to do this or that, it's going to cost this and cost that. And obviously we don't have the money to do that. So um, with Penny Paya's relationship with MCOG, she reached out to them to see what they could bring to the table for us. And those conversations just started. So I would like to table this find out a little bit more of what we could get from NEMCOG and then be able to bring that back to you guys. Because ultimately, if we really, I mean, if you think about it, if, even if they would assist us with one grant program that would, you know, stimulate three to $400,000, which would build, you know, help build a dozen houses. I mean, just the tax alone base from one house over a certain amount of years would, would pay for that. So how often are you guys meeting? Well, it was once a month but we're getting aggressive right now because of this time frame and this opportunity. So we're meeting twice a month. We have another meeting next uh, Tuesday at four o'clock. So you'll come back to us with more information and your thoughts on this? Yes, I'd like to do that. Okay, yeah, no we'll problem with that. Fiscal year 2025 budget calendar. Well, I apologize. I swear I had that on here and I just checked for it. It's not there, but I can give you a synopsis of it. Um, it's already been passed through the budget committee and our department has. It's a standard calendar that we used here for the last few years. And um, the first uh, real uh, step comes in June when departments have uh, put forward their requested fee changes for the coming year. Uh, and this will be an even more comprehensive list than in the past. And you might recall we did several uh, changes mid-year for zoning fees and a few others. So it'll be a bit longer of a list. Uh, then in, uh, uh, in June, departments will uh, be then directed to put their requests in on the BSNA system. In July, I'll go through there and formulate a recommendation to bring to you, and you would see a draft budget, uh, your second uh, tier of meetings in July, uh, which would give us that meeting in August and September to really work through it. Uh, also worked into the calendar is the monthly meetings of the budget committee, and I absolutely intend, it's been a very positive thing, and just to bring everything there, uh, acting as a sounding board. We had a very good discussion at our last meeting, and that's just preliminary stuff as we get deeper into this. Uh, the group that you've appointed around the table very knowledgeable about the, the inner workings of the county, and it's been, a, it's been great talking to a group of people who speak my language. It's um, And just to get some good ideas and good exchanges back and forth. So that's the principal change that you'll see in there is that, that uh, the committee meeting has been inserted. 
but otherwise we have to have the budget adopted uh, by the end of September and we're, that calendar will reflect that. If you're agreeable, I'll put the resolution together, but I guarantee I will attach that calendar mm -hmm. so you'll see it on Thursday. When's your next budget committee meeting, Commissioner Simmons? May 3rd. May 3rd? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't have a problem putting that on as long as we can see it. Yeah. Are you guys okay with that, Commissioner Wiltsy? Yes, that's fine. Yeah. Commissioner Scott? Yeah. Uh, public comment. Public comment in the room. I'm an H. Oh, shoot. I'm sorry. I did. I did. I do. Transit slash wash spot. Commissioner Wiltsy, I apologize. No, it's fine. Um, this day we had our transit meeting, um, and our director brought to our attention that the wash spot that we did approve, there was some, uh, some mix up there and it was a hydraulic wash spot. Oh, no. And he was very adamant. It sounds like he spoke with Ray, who, you know, Ray's our, our main mechanic there. And that the hydraulic is not the way we want to go. So we want to be able to take that one back and go with the one that the other option yeah. right so mm -hmm. the process would be we bring a resolution next week that rescinds the earlier resolution and then adopts that other proposal uh and to move forward and they will hold their price we've already confirmed that we've not um, committed to anything yet uh, and in anticipation of ray coming back from vacation it's a good thing we didn't uh, but it's uh, just a simple process, but they definitely don't want the, the oil to go with the hydraulics to get into the septic system because they feel that will do some damage. And maybe if it was a municipal system, that might be a different story, but they definitely felt that, that you know, hydraulic would be more of a detriment uh, to their uh, infrastructure. Was it going with a different, I remember seeing that last week, is it going with the, the, the different company or just the... Yeah, it's a different company. So... Uh, I don't remember their name. I don't either. Being something. Um, but right, it's, it's to, to, to accept the other quote instead of that first one. Okay. Oh. It was an oversight. And again, th these are 100% grant funded being paid for. Okay. You guys okay with seeing that on? Yes. I agree. Okay. Anything else on that? Commissioner Wilson? Public comment. Public comment in the room? Sir, you'd raised your hand earlier. Did you want to speak? I did, but I think, well. If you do, you got to come up. You got three minutes. You got to come on up, to talk to us. All right. So State you your name. Judy Weiss. Is okay. Okay. Me as a board tonight. Um, one of your proposals for county, I'm thinking that you all need to reward it or it's going to be a big, huge no. Um, this is uh, establishing separate tax limitations for Overmont County townships and the intermediate school districts. Now here's where it gets ugly. To sell separate tax limitations be established for an indefinite period. Now people, and I've heard a lot of people already come to me with this and go, hey, we ain't doing another Kirtland Community College. There's nothing going to be indefinite. So what I want to find out is, are they talking indefinite or are they, because I'll finish it. It says for an indefinite period or until altered by the voters of the county for the county of Bogoma and the townships and the intermediate school districts within the county. Okay. So one is until it's voted back off by the voters, who is responsible for putting it back on the ballot? You guys, right? The commissioners? Mm -hmm. Okay. There's nothing in there guaranteeing you won't put it back on. I've heard this. Mm -hmm. Um, when I seen that, it was just like, okay, Oklahoma County, 7.2 mils, townships, one mil, uh, intermediate school district, three tenths of a mil. County's getting 7.2. Okay. Is there any way that you can like redo this thing and make it a little more user-friendly for the people? Or is that just how it's going to be? It's going to get turned out. Tim, then, hold on, Commissioner Scott. Tim, this is, pu this is public comment, so typically we don't respond. Um, but I'm going to leave this up to Tim. If he would like to respond, I would like him, since he's our administrator, to move forward with this. Okay. So a, a couple of things. Um, yes, it's indefinite. But when the voters originally approved that exact formula in 1965, it was also for an indefinite period. But in 1978, when we passed the Henley Amendment, we started this thing called the rollbacks. And I wish I had my big chart here. Uh, we began rolling back from 7.2 to 7.1999 and all the way to where we are today at 6.0933, I think it is. So the rollback continues to happen. If this were to pass with that wording, yes, it's indefinite. We started at 7.2 again, but we start rolling back again as well. 
So it very well could be 60 years from now, we're talking about this all over again because everything would have been rolled back. What's happened is, is that tax has been rolled back. Inflation has continued to grow. And when we passed Proposal A in 1994, we capped our taxable value increases at 5% or the rate of inflation, whichever is less. Right. Then we had the housing issue occur back in 07, 08. Mm -hmm. Not only did um, uh, our, our revenues start to go down at that point, but the housing values dropped. Well, in 1994, nobody ever thought anything like that would happen because it had never happened before. So we had our housing values drop, which means our taxable values are going down. And you see on the graph that our revenue actually dropped, did not increase, but dropped. Inflation, of course, kept going. After it dropped and everything leveled out, it literally leveled out for about 10 years. Very little growth at all. But inflation keeps growing. We, in the last two years, started to see an uptick in, in the revenue coming in. But we're so far behind inflation that even resetting at 7.2 doesn't catch us up. It does provide some relief to the county. Indefinite, then, if it's passed now, indefinite from here forward means 7.2 maybe the first year. But definitely by the second year, we start rolling back again. And the whole thing starts over. But now, you don't get voters. it the first time around. How are you going to get it? Well, because yeah. you're going to start rolling it back the following year. How? How are you going? To, how are, are you going to accomplish this? Because one thing you probably aren't aware of, but what's going to probably and there's no guarantee yet. There are like 123,000. I'm watching this because I want to see what's going to happen. Uh, AxMI.org is mm -hmm. trying to put out a ballot in November to vote down paying property tax. Yeah. End of story, and yes. That is gonna really cave the state in, okay? Um, I'm talking townships are done. Um, counties are done. Counties are done, yeah, all these boards are done. I mean, where's the money gonna come from? So at this point, I would say, I'd start putting our heads together and say, how can we do this? Because that's even gonna affect the federal government, our VA. That's gonna affect us on the board that I'm on as chairman. You're right. Mm -hmm. So. Instead of worrying about just floating, I think we need to worry about let's make this right the first time, get it right, and be done with it. What do you mean? Well, saying that 7.2, that'll get us by, but then we're going to start rolling it back. Well, if we're just barely getting by, what's rolling it back going to do? Rolling it back there's isn't a choice. That's correct. The, that's the we, state tells us we have right. to do. So there's some information. Yeah. There's some information as well from our treasurer. I, think, I thank you for your comments. Thank you. Any other public comment, sir, back there? No public comment in the room? Any public comment? Hi, you want to come up and introduce yourself? I'm going to make you come on up. Oh, that was very nice of you to take your hat off. That was very polite and appreciated. I'm doing the... American Horror Challenge, and I'm here tonight to finish the local government meeting. And who are you, who are you representing? It, what, what's the plan that you're coming for? Uh, the All American Award. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for being here. Do you have any questions for us? No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank any, you. Public, thank you. any public comment on the phone? No public comment on the phone. We have a closed no session. Closed session. Did you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, I'm Doug Marsh. I'm the new reporter with Omaha Herald. Happy to be here. Thank you. Nice to meet you. We haven't had anybody reporting in a period of time. Yeah. So it's, it's nice. Uh, yeah. We have a closed session. I believe that's why you're here, Matt. Yeah, I'll make sure. Right. This will require a motion. Absolutely. Go ahead. I'll, I'll make the motion. That we go into closed session for a strategy session discussion with our county attorney connected with negotiation of collective bargaining agreements, MCL 15.2681C. We have a motion with support. Roll call vote to go into closed session. Roger. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jenny David? Yes. Craig Scott? Yes. Brendan Simmons? Yes. Charlie Wilson? Yes. yes. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Did, you, did someone in front town? We didn't get a chance to talk about you this or that it worked here. So next, next week. Come on up. I looked at that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Support. All in favor say yes. 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 Do you most, do she supported. Yes. Tracy, are you in the office tomorrow? 
Just volunteer. Um, yeah, Brock told me I could leave early um, for working tonight, but I've got- Forestry. 